This is a video about water and how it can be a solvent to dissolve other materials that are polar. Okay, so very rarely do we find water all by itself, just pure H2O with nothing either floating in it or dissolved in it. So water is usually part of a mixture, and there's two types of mixtures. There's solutions and suspensions. Solutions are mixtures of two or more substances, and we're talking about, you know, water is going to be one of those here, in which the molecules of the substances are evenly distributed. So if you were to uh, analyze the top of the solution versus the middle versus the bottom, everything would be equal. There's a couple of vocab words that go along with this. Um, there are solutes and there's a solvent. The solvent in our case would be water. That's the substance that is doing the dissolving. Uh, the solutes, those are the substances that are being dissolved. So if we want to make salt water, we put salt into water and stir it. Salt would be the solutes and water would be the solvent. So salt is actually an ionic compound because it's two ions held together with an ionic bond. An ion is an atom that is not neutral. It has a, a strong positive or negative charge to it. So let's take a look at salt to understand how this would work. So salt is sodium with chlorine. We call it sodium chloride. And if you remember back to our electron diagrams here, you all remember that the atoms want to have their outermost shell filled. So sodium here has got two electrons in its first shell, so that shell is filled. It's got eight in the second shell, that's as much as that can hold, so that is full. And out here in its third shell, this yellow one, you have to envision it's over here right now, it would only have one. All right, and sodium would either want to take on seven more electrons, which is pretty unlikely, or get rid of that one, okay? Uh, chlorine over here has the opposite problem. It's got two in its first shell, eight in its second shell, and it's got seven in its third shell. That third shell can hold eight though. So it wants to take on one more electron by doing some kind of a bond. So when these two get together, the sodium takes its one electron and gives it to the chlorine. Uh, that would make them both happy. Both their shells are full. When it gives that electron over, it becomes a positively charged ion because it gave away some negativity. The chlorine becomes negatively charged because it took on that negative electron. So as soon as that happens, you have a strong positive sodium, the Na, with a strong negative chlorine, and they just come together like a magnet. And that really strong magnetic attraction is called the ionic bond. It sort of looks like a hydrogen bond, but it's a lot stronger. Okay, this isn't just because there's electrons are on one side and not the other. This is one is missing an electron and one has an extra electron. So this is an ionic bond, extremely strong kind of bond. But water can dissolve these materials because they're polar, because there's positive and negative ends to these. So this is just a little bit of a review here. Let's read through this together. You know that polar means having positive and negative ends. Water can dissolve other molecules, other compounds that are polar, just like that salt we were looking at. Water, because it's doing the, dissol the dissolving, is the solvent, and the salt would be called the solutes, and together they make a solution. Okay, um, so here in this picture, the red and white models, those are the waters. Okay, the red is the oxygen and the white is the hydrogens. And what the water does is it uses its positive and negative charges to break these Na and Cls away from each other. And that's the blue and green balls down at the bottom there. Um, that's how when you mix salt in with water, the salt looks like it goes away, it dissolves. This is right out of your book. So the salt crystal is the green with the gray uh, right in the middle there. And over here, the chlorine is this green and it's negatively charged. The water used its positive hydrogens, those little blue balls there, to surround it. Because the positive hydrogen surrounded this negative chlorine, they neutralized the charge on it and it's now neutral. So water pulls it away from that big crystal. 
and it's hard to see, but right here we have, I'll go down here, we have the positive sodium and the negative red oxygen surrounded that and neutralized that positive charge. It's no longer held like a magnet onto there and it falls away. So as you look, all these waters are surrounding these negative chlorides and these positive sodiums and they're pulling it away from that crystal. That's what happens when you put salt into water and mix it. The water molecules surround and neutralize the sodiums and the, chlori the chlorides, and that's how it dissolves. You know that it's still there. It still tastes salty. Okay, it's just that it's been dissolved. The water used its polar ends to kind of rip that molecule apart. Water could never do that with something like oil, because oil doesn't have positive and negative ends to it. So the oil would want to just do cohesion with itself, and the water would want to do cohesion with itself, and they couldn't interact with each other in any way. Okay, so let me pose this question to you. Why can't water dissolve nonpolar molecules? Well, we just said it. In order to dissolve something, water needs to use its positive and negative ends. If there's no positive and negative ends, whether it's in cooking oil like you guys did in your lab, or it's uh, crude oil that gets spilled in the ocean, uh, there's no positive and negatives to oils and waxes and plastics and things like that. So water can't dissolve them. It can't interact with them. So that would be your answer if I were to ask you this question, is that because nonpolar molecules have no positive or negative ends, water can't use its positive and negative ends to do anything to it. Okay, this is the second type of mixture, and this is called a suspension. You know to suspend means to hang over, or to be floating within, and that's what happens here. Suspensions are mixtures um, where the substances don't dissolve, but they kind of break up into little pieces and float. So here we have milk. If you were to look at milk under the microscope, you would see that especially whole milk, you would see it's got a watery base to it. And the water would have some things dissolved in it, but the milk fat would be suspended. It'd be floating, these little globs within the milk. Now, we don't notice it when we drink milk because the milk's been put into a blender, and that's called homogenizing your milk, and it chops the little milk fat up into little tiny pieces uh, that you really can't taste or feel the texture in your mouth. Um, but that's what milk is. It's a suspension. It's a watery base with uh, little chunks of milk fat floating in it. Mayonnaise would be another type of suspension. Not really as much water-based, more oil-based, but there's materials floating within that mayonnaise. It's not a solution like a salt water would be. Blood is a really good example of a suspension. If you look over here, um, if you were to take blood, and put it into a tube like this and put it into a centrifuge, which is a machine that would spin it, the things that are very dense would go down to the bottom and the things that aren't as dense would stay up at the top. And you'd see that this part called plasma, that's the watery part of our blood. Over here in this picture, this yellow here is this yellow here. That's like the base of the blood, okay? And our blood has these different cells floating in it. So blood is a suspension. There's red blood cells, white blood cells, little parts of cells called platelets, all floating in that watery base. So they're not dissolved, they're not equal, like uh, salt water would be, but they're suspended, they're floating in that watery base of the blood that we call plasma. Now the plasma, even though it's part of a suspension, the plasma is actually a solution too, because if you look here, we have salts in our blood and a sugar called glucose and some of these other things, and those are dissolved because they're polar. So water is actually, or sorry, blood is actually a uh, solution with its plasma and a suspension because it has all these things floating around in it. Okay, and that was the last thing that we had to say. So. Go back and rewatch any parts of this that you need. Uh, this is also in your textbook, and this will be on our upcoming test.